Greetings and welcome to another LGR Cities Skylines thing. Ah yes, is that game that I forget how much that I enjoy unless something new and shiny comes out for it every couple months or so, or in this case, like 10 months. The last pack for this was back in May of 2019, but you know what, I'll take it. It's rather fortuitous timing, cause uh, yeah, I don't know about you, but I've been finding myself rather physically isolated recently, and you know what? Jumping into a virtual city to explore and build and mess around with sounds like a pretty great time at the moment. So yeah, let's dive into Sun. Sunset Harbor, the ninth expansion pack to Cities Skylines, released on March 26, 2020. And this time around, there was no code provided to me for review, no early access or anything, but that's okay. I just went ahead and bought it whenever it came out, and it costs $14.99 or your regional equivalent, as always. As for what you actually get in this expansion, well, this is a, an intriguing mix of items and things and features. Kind of think of this as a, an expansion to previous expansions, really adding on to the same ideas introduced in industries, mass transit, and a little bit of green cities tossed in there, because why not? One of the first things you'll note is that there are five new maps that make pretty good use of the new resources, as you'd expect, but it will work on any existing map as long as it has waterways. Meaning that the new desert map, Desert Oasis, is uh, going to be a challenge for this water-centric content, to say the least. You might be missing out on a few things. Like one of the biggest additions to Sunset Harbor, the fishing industry. Really, it introduces a new resource supply chain, augmenting both industry and commerce, and that new resource being FRESH FISH! Four fresh types of fish, to be exact, with each one spawning under different conditions in the waters. Anchovies will like still shallow waters. Salmon, they need shallow flowing water. Shellfish requires deep still waters. And tuna likes deep flowing water. And yeah, this means that you can just manipulate the terrain to generate different fish as you terrain edit in real time. And naturally, one of the main things that's gonna screw up fish production is pollution, so you gotta keep an eye on that. Like, you might have some ideal water, but it's full of crap, so that'll screw things up, reducing your yield significantly. Now, the way you actually get them fishies out of there is by building a fishing harbor to begin with. There's more specialized ones that will unlock the more fish you fish. And the way you dial in what your boats are going to be grabbing out of the water are with fishing routes. And yeah, these work a lot like the road tool, pretty much the same as blimps. Just draw yourself a path out in the open waters, and as long as it connects in a closed loop back to the originating harbor, then it'll work just fine. In fact, you can even send boats outside of city limits. Although you do want to make sure that they're long enough to catch 100% load per boat but not so long as to waste time either. Like uh, some of the ones I made early on, it's like half of the boat's travel was coming back after they had already gotten 100% load. And you can overlap them as much as you want, but it's annoyingly tricky to tell each individual fishing route apart after a while, as all are the exact same pattern and color. And as far as I can tell, there's no way to change this, at least right now, <laughs> it's confusing. A far less confusing and much more simple option are fish farms, and these will unlock at City Milestone 5, letting you farm fish in the area instead of going out to uh, search for them. Actually, later you can also farm seaweed and algae, but yeah, the farm, man, it's a static thing, so it doesn't need a route, and in fact it'll also work in a small lake, which is pretty cool. As long as you've got some kind of water that's not polluted, you can farm water critters. And much like the farms that you'll find on land in the game, each one has its own growth cycle showing the current yield, and the more healthy the farm is, the quicker and more effectively you'll grow whatever you tell it to grow. Now, these farms and harbors only hold a limited capacity of fish at any given time, so it's well worth building uh, one of the places that can do things with fish, one being the fish market where the raw food material can be sold directly to citizens and tourists, and it gives a surrounding area a nice health benefit for some reason, and also some entertainment. The other place you can send the catch of the day is the Fish Factory, a more traditional industrial destination where sea creatures of all kinds are packaged up as generic goods to be shipped out to whoever needs them. Now, it's worth noting that this doesn't work how the Industries DLC does. You're not going to be painting fishing districts or unlocking more levels or adding a bunch of little extra buildings off to the side. It really is just another way to accumulate generic commercial goods, which is 
Somewhat disappointing, honestly. Effectively, it's just an industry overlay saying you're doing something different with each type of fish and building, but in reality it's producing those generic items all generically. I will say it is nice to have boats at least, not just giant cargo and cruise ships going around in your waterways all the time. It kind of always bothered me that jet ski rentals and marinas that we had in the game before this didn't generate boats. So having a bunch of different types of fishing boats out there, yeah, it's a cool look. And really, that's about it for the harbor part of Sunset Harbor. Aesthetic diversification really is its shining attribute. You get harbors at sunset, and boatloads of boats. And that's that! Thankfully, there's a good bit more to go over, just not really related to fishing or harbors or anything. For whatever reason, they've included a bunch of stuff regarding water and waste management, bus systems, transportation hubs, and aviation, city services, and just, I don't know why they bundled all these in this pack, but well, let's go over them anyway. Starting with the water and waste management buildings, adding on to the usual citywide garbage service. With the two main new buildings being the waste processing complex and waste transfer facility. Each sending out transfer and collection trucks to go and handle trash in between the normal trash collection stuff. The way it works is that you get these other trucks that are picking up garbage from landfills and incinerators and the green cities recycling centers and such. Then they take them to be processed at a transfer facility before again being taken to another place for its final destination. The positive being that this also works well in residential zones. You can put one of these buildings there and it's not going to like be extremely polluted. I mean, it's still going to be a little bit, but it keeps it way down compared to a lot of the other garbage buildings and opens up some room for other less nasty things. There's also the inland water treatment plant, which will clean up your water without dumping it into a waterway. So hooray! Now you get tons of ground pollution instead. These new treatment plants also come with an eco variant, kind of going along with the green city's stuff, as well as advanced versions of the same buildings, doing the same thing but more advancedly. Oh, and the new bigger water tower. I, I think this thing looks excellent. It's all retro feature funky looking, very much from the Cloud City School of Architecture. I approve. The next big addition to this pack are, inexplicably, bus systems. First up being the new intercity buses. These work differently than any other bus in the game. It just allows citizens and tourists to travel to and from off-screen cities, reducing highway traffic and traffic overall, ideally. There's no need for stops or lines or anything like that. You just need a depot or a terminal, place it down somewhere, and it just works. I like the effects of this, and I like the idea as well, but the execution, man, I just still wish that you could do something more with those unseen outside cities, like trading things back and forth or something. I don't know, I've played too many SimCity games. As it is, you've just got these buses going in and out of the blue void at the edge of the map, and supposedly there's other cities out there. I don't know, it's fine. I'm glad these buses are here. Something I'm less on board with are the trolley buses. Basically trackless trams, electric buses, drawing power from overhead wires. Meaning that they require yet another specialized road that you gotta commit to if you wanna use them. And I'm not really sure I see much reason to use them. It's nice that they're not stuck in one track, like a tram, so they're able to change lanes and pull over to the side of the road and stuff, but the biggest reason to want them would seem to be an aesthetic choice. A lot of the advantages that I could think of for having these in real life, they're just not modeled in the game. Things like vehicle pollution or smog, yeah, city skylines doesn't worry about that with traffic, and you don't get any advantages over like a gasoline bus, extra torque or endurance that an electric would have going up hills or anything. It's just not modeled in game. So, I don't know man, props to them for solving the technical challenge of making the wires work. It's cool to see that animation happening, but yeah, I can completely leave these behind and I don't think I'll ever be using them after this video. Keeping in line while the transportation add-on stuff, they have also added five new transport hubs, connecting different networks together and allowing citizens and tourists to change from one type of transportation to another in the same spot. And I like these. They're a good way to simplify things and save a little bit of space. So you've got a hub for bus and intercity buses to transfer between one another, a hub for metro and intercity buses to do the same thing, a bus metro hub to go back and forth between those, and a train metro hub doing exactly what it sounds like. 
And the last one is a little bit of a different thing. It's the Metropolitan Airport, counting as a really large hub. In fact, it's the biggest building in Skylines to date. Effectively, it's an international airport with two metro stations and two landing pads for passenger helicopters. More on that in a sec. Because those metros, man, yeah, you get some metro additions here with the overground metro. Finally, you got some ground level and elevated metro tracks that can also connect to existing underground metros. So yeah, I don't know, I, I like this kind of stuff. Having like elevated trains going around your city for passengers is just cool. It looks neat, it's fun to play with, and it's also free with the latest patch for city skylines, so you don't even need this pack to get them. Good stuff. But yeah, let's move on to the aviation things and those passenger helicopters, because yeah, that's a new thing. It definitely changes a lot in terms of the overall look of the skies of your city. They are effectively reskinned blimps working really just the same way. They need pathways laid out like blimps do, and you've got helicopter stops that can be placed anywhere you like as buildings, but you can't place stops on top of existing buildings. <laughs> That's something that I thought would maybe be in the game. I don't know, that'd be awesome in my mind. And it makes sense considering all the pre-existing rooftop landing pads. Like, look at all those H's just dotted all over your cities. It'd be pretty neat if you could have helicopters just going from building to building and hopping around and picking up whoever needed picking up anywhere. And yeah, maybe it's not feasible, but I think it'd be cool. Then there's the last of the new flight-related buildings, the Aviation Club. And this right here is just a little bit different than the others. This is a new, unique building that you can plop down. It doesn't really do anything in terms of adding to your transportation system. It's just a single, small terminal with an air traffic control and hangars and a runway and allows light aircraft for flight enthusiasts to just go wandering around in little planes up above your city. That's cool in terms of how it looks. But it really is just another entertainment option for your citizens, and it's pretty noisy, but it's attractive, and they seem to like using it in my city, so I'm gonna keep this around. Let's see, what else is left here? Uh, yeah, we got a couple of new city services put into effect by placing down a couple of buildings. One service being elder care, and the other being child care, and this also comes free with the latest patch. So the child care comes in the form of the Child Health Center, increasing the health and ultimately the happiness of all children and teenagers in the surrounding area, and also increasing the birth rate so you get more citizens more quickly. And then there's the elder care facility, which is something you plop down to increase the health of all your elders, heal sick elders, and attract new elders, and overall increase the average lifespan of your older citizens. However, do use it with caution. I've had some weird results with this thing. It just seems to mess with the older, educated population of your businesses, and I ended up with a bunch of them going out of business as a result of the elder care. I guess just my older, skilled workers were going to that facility instead of working anymore, so yeah, it threw things out of whack. And finally, the last bit of newness in this pack are six new city policies, mostly pertaining to fishing industry maintenance and revenue, along with the ability to use algae-filtered water and incentivize greater use of the intercity buses and the aviation club. Mm, yeah, that's City Skylines Sunset Harbor. An awful lot of other things beyond sunsets and harbors, I gotta say. Personally, a little confusing in terms of all the things they decided to include in one pack this time even more so than some of the other confusing packs we've had. And if you ask me, my verdict is just wait for a sale with this one. Unless you really care that much about changing up the visuals without a whole lot going on underneath the hood to change up or improve the actual gameplay. I'm all for additional choice in terms of changing up the way your city looks. I just prefer that the aesthetic changes weren't so surface level and similar to things that are already here. You got trolley buses instead of trams and helicopters instead of blimps, small planes instead of only jetliners, fishing boats in addition to ships, and fine, it's all fine, decent stuff that I'm glad to have and play around with, but do we really need to spend $15 for the pleasure at this point in the game's five plus year existence? No, not really. No matter how much, it varies the existing look of your cities. It's not going to change the overall feel of the game enough for me to want to recommend it at full price. And if you found this review useful or just enjoyed something you saw here or heard here, then check out some of my other videos. I've done all the different city skylines packs, and there's all kinds of other stuff being uploaded each week right here on LGR. And as always, thank you for watching and stay safe out there.